Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a really cute and fun background with this little stamp, the bear and penguin in the wreath um, from the From Me to You stamp set from Sweet November Stamps. I'm also going to be pulling small stamps from all of these other Sweet November sets um, that we're going to be using to make like a circular background. It's not really a wreath, but we're using Gina Kay's wreath builder. Um, and I was inspired by the wreath in that little stamped image because I really wasn't sure what background I wanted to create. And so I just decided to kind of make this repeating pattern background. So I wanted to share my way of using the wreath builder that isn't just a wreath. I've used it <laughs> to make actual like foliage wreaths before and it's very fun but I love this other version um, as another fun way to make a really cute background that in my opinion is a little less daunting color wise um, so you have it in your back pocket should you ever need it. So I'm going in with the larger of the Gina K sets it's like the four and a quarter or something like that um, and I'm stamping my image in first my main image and I'm going to mask that with a full stick post-it note just fussy cutting around this one was super easy to cut out really simple and clean lines um, and then I didn't want to have just a plain white space I wanted there to be some kind of color so I'm making a halo with this soft green um, distress ink. I wish that I had let the ink dry on my mask a little longer because I think a, lot, a tiny bit of that black kind of smushed around with my green. But overall, it's good. I knew I didn't want a ton of color because I wanted to be able to stamp my images over top and of the halo and be able to color them whatever I wanted. So I kept it kind of right around my little bear. Um, and I'm going to start by placing down these first two stamps. We're going to do um, like quarter turns versus like eighth you can go in between and do the diagonal but for the size of what I was using and because I didn't want them to overlap at all I did like a full quarter turn each time just making sure that my stencil is tucked into that upper right hand corner each time as well and going the whole way around. Uh, you'll see I'm popping that center piece back into the stencil to make sure that things are kind of lined up. There's guideline circles on that center piece and I was just using it to kind of make sure that everything was gonna lay nice and straight. So I went in with a snowflake and the other like opposite facing candy cane my second round through. And I liked the candy canes kind of like looping away from each other. I just thought that was really cute. And I do all four turns, even for like when that one turn was like completely hidden um, on the mask. It's just easier for me to like plot out and know mentally where things belong. Um, you doing it this way. <laughs> so I'm going to take my mask off and start to color. But then once I had like a couple red pieces filled in, um, I really, I didn't love how empty the upper corners looked. So I grabbed a stocking and another snowflake. Um, and we're just going to go one more circle around to fill in those corners. And this, I think, really brought it together because when you're using the wreath and they're overlapping and that's what you're going for, I think having the corners empty is fine because it's more of a complete circle. But for this picture and how scattered and separate everything is, it felt too empty where when I filled in those corners, now it looks like kind of a square Right, And then the bottom is just plain. And I think it just takes up the space in a nicer way. So yeah, I use the same reds for everything. I'll zoom in and, and you'll get a better look when we're coloring the actual image. Um, but for the most part, I used all of the same reds for all of my little accents. Um, everything was really simple on these little guys. There just isn't a lot of room to color. 
Um, so this is, you know, the main event, the main, <laughs> the main focus of the card. So for my bear, I did decide that I wanted a brown bear and not a polar bear. Um, not only because polar bears and penguins don't live on the same, in the same place, but, um, unless that that's not true. I'm pretty sure that's true though. Um, and, but because I knew I just wanted bolder color in the middle because everything else was so soft and small around it. I wanted the brown to kind of take up space. So I'm starting out with my E59 going in and giving him some shadows. Um, really trying to focus on darkening up that leg that's behind the wreath. And then jumping down to E57 to just start pulling that color out. Um, and then we'll go, you know, lighter and lighter down the line. I always put the caps on the screen for you so you can see exactly what color I'm using. Um, right now it is Thanksgiving night when I'm doing this voiceover. Everyone else is in a turkey coma and is in bed. Um, so I've had this video prepped and was just waiting to do my voiceover and it felt like a good kind of cozy night to do that. Um, this Thanksgiving was good, but a little bittersweet. It was my first Thanksgiving without my grandma and um, I didn't usually spend Thanksgiving with her, but in my, you know, rotation of phone calls I was making this morning, um, it hit me that I couldn't call her. That was a little rough, but I know she would have loved this card. She collected bears. She loved bears, um, and so this card would definitely make her smile, so I thought it was a good kind of cap for the night to do this voiceover and, um, you know, kind of think of her. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> for, for my little penguin, I wanted to keep him nice and dark, um, but not go with a cool black because, again, I wanted this card to kind of feel cozy and warm with all those warm browns we just used on our little bear. So I used warm grays instead of cool grays for his dark spots. And we'll go in and give him his l nice little light belly in um, a minute, I believe. I don't think I did that unless I did it even while I was tearing up. Um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> about that. Um, so for the wreath, though, I'm going in with my G29. And this green combo is one that I saw um, Alberto use on... Um, like a post to our reel on Instagram. I've been really struggling with finding green combinations that I like. YGs, I love. Super easy to find good, good combos in my YGs. And I don't know if I just don't have the right green Copics or I just haven't been jumping across color families enough. Like, you know what I mean? Going from the 20s to the teens to the zeros. But this was a combo that I saw him use on line, I think on in a reel, and I really wanted to try it. So I went 29, 28, and then we're going to jump into the teens. Um, and I think this just has a really nice kind of like true Christmassy green. I don't know. I really like it. Um, never mind. That's not... <laughs> That's not what I'm using. I wonder what video I'm thinking about. All right, well, just kidding. Uh, keep an eye out for a different green combo. I do like this one, though. I went in with G85, it looked like. Um, and it is definitely really nice and soft. I like it. But yeah, somewhere in the next couple videos, I will use a G29, and then it's like 17 and then 14 maybe, and it's really pretty. So, <laughs> oh goodness, that's pretty much how my weeks have been going recently. I'm trying to prep and get videos ready ahead of time, um, just because this time of year gets so busy, and I want to make sure that I'm still making content. Here we go with his light, his light gray belly. Um, but I do, I know for me as a content consumer, I really love having videos, like comfort videos to watch 
this time of year when life gets overwhelming or crazy or I need to take some me time, you know, after a busy weekend or after a busy Saturday, I like having some videos I can put on um, on like a Sunday or, you know, at night when the kids go to bed, um, either while I'm cleaning or while I'm crafting or if I just need to kind of help quiet my brain. So um, it's really important to me as a creator to be able to make videos um, that will hopefully help do that for other people. Um, so I am trying to make sure I have plenty of good, fun videos coming. I'm going to have at least two more of the mic like, calming, real-time, set-to-music videos um, in December, but I'm also going to have um, a regular Friday video every week as well. So for my background, I decided to cut a teeny tiny little thin red frame right around my um, stamped panel. And then that whole thing is going to get popped onto a striped red and white background. And so for that red panel, because I wanted it so thin, I tucked my main panel up to the left top corner and then just trimmed the other two sides to match. I find when I try to measure, it never turns out right. So it's always way easier for me to do it that way. And I think that little border of red helps to kind of separate everything out from the stripe background so that it's not too busy. But I love how the stripes tie in with the candy canes that we stamped. So I wanted to bring a little pop to this. It needed some sparkle or shine. And I thought I was going to use those snowflake clay pieces that you see at the top. But I ended up going in with this kind of muted gold um, sticky pearls from Pink and Main, and I love how they turned out. I think they play off the um, ornaments on the wreath really well, and I just, it makes my heart happy. I, it makes my brain, I just like it. Um, so <laughs> I stamped my sentiment on the bottom in a matching red that says it's a season of magic and wonder, and I think that this is just so cute. So I hope this inspires you if you have one of those Gina K um, wreath builders or you've been thinking about it but you're not sure you're going to make a ton of wreaths all the time. I highly encourage you to play around with stamping different styles of backgrounds using that and check your stash because I'm sure you have a ton of small stamps more than you would even think of that would work really well for a background like this. So I hope that you have an amazing day. I hope you had a great holiday if you're in America and celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, but more importantly, I hope that you have a great December and whatever that looks like for you. And yeah, thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. I will see you soon. And until next time, happy crafting.